Well, good evening, Council President, members of Council, distinguished guests, and the citizens of Newcastle County. Thank you for joining me here as I present the fiscal year 2013 budget for Newcastle County. Budgets are about numbers. Numbers are important because the right numbers means the county government is being fiscally responsible, is maintaining our AAA bond rating and keeping taxes low. Last year, at this time, I was pleased to present a general fund budget that was balanced, with no tax increase, no spending from our reserve, no service cuts, and for the first proposed budget, that first such proposed budget in 10 years. With the economy recovering so slowly, we are continuing to conserve the reserve. Tonight, I am equally pleased to present to you a $166.6 million general fund budget for fiscal year 2013 that is balanced, contains no tax increase, spends no money from our reserve account, and makes no service cuts or layoffs. Let me repeat that. A balanced budget, no tax increase, no spending down reserves, no layoffs, and no cuts in vital services. <laughs> Balancing a budget is not easy in these times. As soon as Council passed the current budget last May, we started the process all over again. We had to start fresh because as of that date, we faced a 5.1 million shortfall for fiscal year 2013. Had our employees not granted us $2 million in concessions this year and next, we would have faced even greater shortage. But our success last year simply meant we had to do the same thing again this year. Let me say a little more about why we face a shortfall again this year. The reasons aren't complicated. Property taxes, real estate transfer taxes, permits and fees related to land use together provide more than 90% of the revenue we collect. Although some sectors of our economy are showing signs of life compared with last year, real estate and construction are not. Health care for employees and retirees continues to drive our cost up. We will spend a total of $21 million next year. We are subject to the same increases in doctor, hospital, and drug costs as everyone else. If we had not taken action, we would have spent an extra $2 million next year. Here, too, we actively managed our costs. We took advantage of a unique federal program to pay for some retiree health care. We rebid our insurance and modified our pharmaceutical benefit program to increase the use of low-cost drugs. These efficiencies will cover 85% of the health care cost increase next year. In a government that spends three out of four dollars on personnel, one of the methods by which we achieve a balanced budget is to closely monitor the number and types of positions we have. As I stated before, I do not favor a blanket hiring freeze and have never ordered one. Instead, every position is judged on its merits. For example, when we had the opportunity to apply for federal funding for six additional police officers, I did not hesitate. The six new officers will bring us to the highest number of funded positions we have ever had in county government. But even though we're adding these six police positions and eight new 911 operators, emergency call operators, to deal with the high call volume, eliminating unneeded vacancies in all areas of county government means we will have fewer total positions next year than this year and the fewest number in the county in 11 years. As I've said repeatedly, public safety is our highest priority. Our public safety personnel do an excellent job, and we want to help them do an even better job by ensuring they have the resources they need. A little over 20 years ago, the county police force expanded. Inevitably, these new officers reach retirement age. Retirements have increased. Leaving, public, leaving vacant police officer positions. Our current police academy graduates in the end of May. As I announced last week, we will start a new police academy class, and the date will be June 11th. This marks the first time in 13 years the county has had two police academies in the same calendar year. It is worth noting that crime is declining in the territory patrolled by our officers, and that our police department's clearance rate for all major crimes greatly exceeds the national average. But let me make it very clear though, even one crime is too many, so we will not rest on our laurels. Our paramedics also do a great job. We have the only nationally accredited paramedic service in the state. 
one that saves heart attack victims at triple the U.S. average. Our capital budget contains the funds for a standalone paramedic station on the grounds of Christiana Cares, new hospital complex in Middletown, as well as funds to relocate, relocate paramedic unit two from its current inadequate quarters. We also have a state-of-the-art emergency communication center, and we want to keep it that way. As mentioned, we will add eight emergency call operators at our 911 center to answer calls even faster in an environment where every second counts. Plus, institute a career ladder to attract and retain the best employees, honoring a previous commitment. Finally, our county is protected by 21 volunteer fire companies, whose members are an important part of our public safety mission. They work shoulder to shoulder with our paramedics and police. Now I'd like to talk about our sewer fund operating budget, which pays for the day-to-day -day expenses of our wastewater and stormwater systems. I am proposing a $71 million fund budget with no increase in sewer rates. While we're not increasing sewer rates, sewer expenses will rise by $1.9 million in fiscal year 2013, due exclusively to two factors. First, over the years, the county has spent millions of dollars to maintain and repair an aging wastewater system that is facing tougher regulations from the state and federal government. The county sells bonds to pay for those repairs. The debt service payments, the principal and interest on those bonds, are now due. The debt service increase pays off projects already completed or underway, not new projects. These previous projects have been extremely successful, and I will touch on that shortly. Second, we are soon to receive new regulatory permit from the Environmental Protection Agency covering stormwater and drainage. Needless to say, the new permit, although required by federal law, does not come with any funding. It will increase our drainage expenses by nearly $600,000 next year. Again, all the increase in sewer expenses next year is due to increase in debt service and federal regulations. As I stated last year, historically, Newcastle County has treated its sewers like a public utility. <clears throat> the system pays for itself through user fees. For this reason, I propose to use $1 million in back sewer fees received from MVF bankruptcy settlement last year to help pay our increased costs. When the company failed to pay its fees due to bankruptcy, every ratepayer had to pay a little more to make up for the shortfall. We doggedly pursued the back fees during the long bankruptcy process and ultimately recovered them. It's only fair that we use this settlement money to keep fees down for you, the ratepayers. The third major component of our budget is the capital budget. I am presenting a $17 million capital improvement program. This is a leaner capital budget than last year, and highlights include $5.7 million for sewer construction and rehabilitation, $4.2 million to study, plan, construct, or renovate libraries in Bear, Claymont, the uh, southern Newcastle County, and J Route 9 community. $2.1 million to take care of other county facilities, $1.9 million for park improvements, $1.5 million for technological upgrades, and $800,000 to update our paramedics' life-saving equipment. In closing, since I became county executive, we have made tough decisions on budgets in fiscal year 2011, fiscal year 2012, and now fiscal year 2013. Our decisions have not always made everyone happy, but they've been the right decisions for the citizens of Newcastle County nonetheless. 